Hello, this is Angelique, and you're listening to the Gaston Speaks podcast, the official podcast of the Gaston County Public Library. I am here with Andrew again for another episode of Andrew Really, Really Likes Award Shows. For this episode, Andrew is going to take us through his predictions for Oscar winners. Andrew? And I apologize again. We're doing this on the what we call the quick and dirty, so it's going to sound a little less professional, and that's because... We're busy. and yeah. um, We've been trying to do this for two days. I know, I know. And stuff keeps coming up. So we're happy. to. You guys seem to enjoy it, so we're going to keep doing it. And last year we didn't get to predict the winners because we had the plague. So I'm mm-hmm. actually happy we get to do it this year. So we're super excited to predict this year's Oscars. Um, they are going to be unpredictable, and we'll, we'll get to that, particularly in the acting categories. Um, this is the 95th Academy Awards, which is kind of cool, kind of a cool milestone. And they will air this Sunday at 8 p.m. on ABC. All right, let's dive into the predictions. All right, so I'm going to start and just kind of breeze through some of these technical categories and the short films. Um, nobody knows who wins the shorts. The people who pretend like they know don't know. But I'm going to predict anyway, just for fun. Uh, the best animated short, I'm going with The Boy, The Mall, The Fox, and The Horse. If you've never read that book, it's actually a really, really cute book. We have it here. And um, it won the BAFTA for Best British Short. There really are no precursors for these things, so you're just kind of shot in the dark. Um, but that one actually is a good one. I would definitely check that out. Best Documentary Short, I'm going to go with, some, go with something called The Elephant Whisperers. And then Best Live Action Short, and this is French, so I apologize. Le Poupile? Le Poupile? Yeah, that. Mm. In Southern, it's La Poupile. So mm. anyway, and that's not even it. So uh, so for Best Visual Effects, Avatar, Way of Water. I mean, whatever you think of Avatar, um, those, vi- those visual effects are pretty stunning. It won the BAFTA. It won at the Visual Effects Society, which is its guild. And duh. I mean, come on. I mean, I know it's blue people, but they're really well done blue people. Come on. All right. So best sound. Uh, BAFTA went to All Quiet on the Western Front, and then the Cinema Audio Society, which is the Sound Mixers Guild, went to Top Gun. Um, I think it's a tight race, but American BAFTA, the Brits didn't get Top Gun. That's totally an American film, and and it's an American experience. So I think Top Gun's going to win there. Um, Although All Quiet, big British, not British, big uh, war epic, um, it it could definitely uh, uh, sneak in there. Um, for best pro- production design, I'm going with Babylon. It's a tough one because you have a lot of best picture nominations in this category. Um, but Babylon won at BAFTA, it won at the Critics' Choice, and it won at the Art Directors Guild, which again is its guild. Um, so I think voters are kind of settling around it. But all quiet on Western Front, they rebuilt basically the trenches for World War One, World War One, World War One. <laughs> it's early. Um, and Avatar, I mean, it's not necessarily a traditional set, but the production design really does work well with the visual effects. And then Elvis could upset because for some. God knows what reason people like it. Speaking of, for best makeup and hairstyling, I think Elvis is going to win <laughs> um, because they recreated Elvis. Um, the Whale could win. It should win. Um, and if it does, it might s- signal a big shift in best actor. But Elvis won the BAFTA, and it did the best at the makeup and hairstyling g- guild. I totally printed this, and I said not to. I swore I said not to put it on front to back, so we didn't have to flip over pages. And here we are. Um, for best original score, when I say I have no idea, I mean I have no idea. This one's always tough. The music categories, there isn't like a guild that lines up with it. Um, Justin Hurwitz, who won for La La Land a couple years ago, won the Globe for Babylon. Uh, John Williams could win for The Fablemans. There's a lot of talk about he's not won since. I mean, uh, it's been a while, and he's. You know, about to retire from movies, and he's the greatest film composer of all time. So he could win. That would actually be cool because it's a very good score. Um, I'm going with All Quiet on the Western Front. It won the BAFTA. It's a big war epic. Um, I think they're going to go with that. But but this one's tricky. Same thing for uh, original song. I think it's between two of them. There's this really fun song from this um, indie uh, Indian film, and it's a it's kind of like a Bollywood type uh, film. It's called um, RRR. We talked about in the nominations. It got nothing except for this, but good for it. Um, and the song's called Natu Natu. It won the Critics' Choice. It won the Globe for original song. It's a huge hit. It's a lot of fun. If you've never listened to it, go to YouTube. Check it out. Um, but watch out for Rihanna. Okay, I mean, Super Bowl halftime shows, the pregnancy. She's all over the news, and she has this huge song in Black Panther, and she's performing at the Oscars, which is a coup for them. Because they need the ratings, you know. More people watch Rihanna's <laughs> Super Bowl halftime show than watch the actual Super Bowl, so... And that may bring eyeballs to the Oscars this year, but she could win. There's a lot of buzz. Um, for film editing, um, I have, I have, it says I had, I, I still have. I don't, anyway, I wrote this quick and dirty as well. Um, I have Top Gun Maverick winning. Um, it did win the Ace Eddie. Uh, the Eddie. Oh no, wait, I don't have it winning. Never mind. Okay, so I had Top Gun winning. <laughs> it. And, it, and I had it winning for months. It did win the Ace Eddie, but the Eddie split between drama and comedy. And Everything Everywhere All at Once won the comedy, and then it won the BAFTA. And if you've seen that movie, the editing is, is, is tricky, right? Yeah. Top Gun's just very slick. 
So yeah. I think it's still between those two, but I'm going with everything everywhere all at once, which makes me happy. Happy Costume design, it's Elvis. Again. <laughs> um, cinematography, Elvis won the ASC. Actually, that's cool. That was the first female uh, cinematographer to ever win the um, American Society of Cinematographers Film Award. So that I actually like. I like the fact that it broke a glass ceiling there. Um, but I'm sticking with All Quiet on the Western Front. It did win the BAFTA. Um, and, and the BAFTA has actually had a much better track record with cinematography than the Guild over here has had. So um, I'm going to go with All Quiet. Um, for best animated feature, Guillermo del Toro's uh, Pinocchio. It's won everything. Um, but watch out for Turning Red. They love Pixar. For best documentary feature, um, I want it to be every um, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed. It's absolutely one of my top five films of the year. It probably won't win. Um, most of the major precursors that kind of lead up to this has split between Fire of Love, which is a National Geographic film, um, and Navalny, which is about um, the critic of Putin. Um, and so I think that that one's going to be, there's a lot of, you know, obviously we're still in the news with the Ukraine invasion and Russia being the news. Um, and so I think that um, it's going to win. But Fire of Love is the feel-good one. And so usually this award either is the feel-good one or the really relevant one. Um, so it's definitely a toss-up, but I'm going with Navalny. I think it's just the mo- most, um, whatever the speech is going to be, it's going to be politically charged, but in, in a way that's that's going to be ha- make those voters happy. Um, for Best International Feature, I just wrote All Quiet on the Western Front and nothing else. It's nominated for Best Picture. It's going to win a bunch of awards. No offense to the other films. There's some really good ones. There's one called Close that's really good. Um, it's going to win. So original screenplay, I've actually decided to switch this because I don't care. I'm going on the sweep. I don't give a crap at this point. Um, Banshees of Sharon won at BAFTA, and then the WGA went to um, Everything Everywhere all at once. Um, I, I do think that picture and director, we'll get to that, are going to go to Everything Everywhere. And so the question is, does it sweep? Is it like Birdman or Parasite? Or do they give McDonough, Martin McDonough, who's the writer director of Banshees, uh, a Constellation Prize? Because he's not going director. Um, I had said I'm going with the split. But I think it's going to be a Birdman or a Parasite. And I'll tell you why, because of, of its sweep of the guilds. And we'll get to that when we get to Best Picture. Best Adapted Screenplay. The one thing I didn't like about All Quiet was the screenplay. I thought it had issues. And it's hard with a war movie to write a good script. Um, it did win at BAFTA, but Women Talking wasn't nominated. Then Women Talking won at WGA, where All Quiet wasn't nominated. So we have no idea. Um, they're both up for Best Picture. I think Sarah Polly is going to be the favorite there for for Women Talking. I think people are going to um, appreciate that script. And and I, d- I just think that a lot of voters are, are, are not going to vote for a big war epic for um, for writing. Um, but we'll see that it, they really like the movie. It, it could be a big surprise. OK, um, let's tackle the acting awards. All right. So for the first time ever, not the first. I'm sure it's happened before, but the first time in like 25 years, the BAFTA for acting wins and the SAG for acting wins are completely different. So normally those are the two groups you can pull from because. Though there's about 10% of the BAFTA that are probably more now because they've really tried to increase their international membership vote at the Academy. And then there's a lot of SAG after voters who also vote at the Academy and they don't agree on anything. So here we go. Um, <laughs> so for best supporting actress, this race has just been turned upside down. I have no idea. And by the way, all five, this is one of those, all five actresses are absolutely stunning. Um, and I think it's down to three. All of them are great. Um, Angela Bassett won the Globe and the Critics' Choice, and I kind of thought this was going to be hers. Carrie Condon won the BAFTA, which was expected. I thought Bassett was going to win SAG, and then then the battle would be be between Carrie Condon and Angela Bassett. I think the one thing that hurt Angela Bassett was they kept saying, oh, this is Marvel's first acting nomination. This is Marvel's first acting nomination. Those voters don't like Marvel movies. Yeah. And I think it hurts her, unfortunately. She could still win, by the way. Um, Then the SAG went to Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, now, Jamie, it, and SAG has, I think, only one in, like, 20 years that has won SAG for this category, has not won the Oscar. Um, and, and her film is the front runner for Best Picture. I think it's going to happen. I think she's going to win. But let me tell you something. I don't I mean, it's going to be win the envelope. It, that they could announce that, you know, that Os- the Elvis wins this award and they're not even nominated. <laughs> Love that movie. Anyway, um, this is definitely an interesting one. Carrie Condon, though, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of support. She could sneak in. But I, I, I kind of hope it's either Curtis or Bassett just because they are two living legends and they've never won. Either of them have ever won Oscars. Um, and Curtis gave a great speech at the SAG. She was hilarious. Um, you know, I talk about like Nepo babies. Mm-hmm. She's like, okay, well, I'm the original Nepo baby. <laughs> my mother was Janet Lee and my, my father was Tony Curtis. Like, but I didn't get any. Yeah, maybe he got me ahead in some ways, but I've been in this business 50 years and they've been gone for a long time. I must have done something right. <laughs> she kind of threw it back in her face. And it, but I think they they liked that. Um, so so that, that'll that be an interesting one. The one I actually still feel pretty solid about is Kei Hui Kwan. I did it right? I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once for Best Supporting Actor. And um, 
Barry Kogan did kind of upset at BAFTA for Banshees. He's funny in that movie. He's really great. Um, but but this is this is Quan's to lose. I mean, the guy. This is the big comeback story. Yeah. You know, he even talked about recently where he lost his health insurance. He, he filmed everything everywhere all at once, and he got his health insurance back through SAG. But I guess through SAG, you have to have a certain number of credits to keep the insurance. Mm-hmm. Like you still have to be working. Yeah. I think that they probably hit a retired point, but obviously he's not at that point. And he lost his health insurance. So he literally is now nominated for an Oscar. But even after filming this film and being able to put that on his resume, he still couldn't get. I don't know what the deal is with him because he seems awesome. He's great in the film. Um, but this is his big comeback story. And I, I think it's the the one that's actually solid. Now watch that be the one that goes to bear. And then I'm the other ones. That, that's what will happen. That's what will happen. All right. Best actress. Andrea Riseborough got in. The big campaign worked. And then it sparked a ton of controversy. <laughs> they thought she like cheated? I don't think they thought necessarily she cheated. I don't think her nomination was ever in jeopardy. But there definitely was some, some of the actresses who were pushing for her. Uh, well, first of all, she bumped out people and that and there's a lot of controversy there i'm not diving into it you can read online um but there definitely were some lines crossed because she some of her friends who were rooting for her actually mentioned like other nominees like well these people are in so you need to vote for so and so and that actually violates rules Uh. so no one no one lost her nomination she never she she apparently never posted about anything she didn't (laughs) give a crap you know but they they went for her She's not winning. If she wins, there will be like they will not be good for people. Um, I think this is a two way waste. This is two a two way waste. God, it is so early. It's so, so early. early. Um, so it's so early, and and I I don't know. It's it's been a long week. It's Wednesday. I know. It's Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> it's been a good week. We've had a good week. It's just been a yeah. long week. Um, so uh, Kate Blanchett um is fantastic in Tar, and she's won twice before, and she doesn't necessarily need a third one. But if they're going to give someone a third Oscar, it better be someone as as freaking good as as Kate Blanchett. She is fantastic. That movie is. Ooh. We have it here. You should check it out. It's it's tough. She is mean, <laughs> but good mean. And then the other one is my personal favorite, Michelle Yeoh, for everything, everywhere, all at once. <sighs> Blanchett won the BAFTA. There's a lot of love for Tar. I, in my mind, I, I, I'm i kind of thinking it's going to be Kate Blanchett, but you know what? Screw it. Mm-hmm. I'm going for it. I'm going for Michelle Yeoh. She won the SAG, and the the love in that room for her, there's clearly... She also has that story, this longtime working actress. Do you know Michelle Yeoh? If you, yeah. You, you know who she is. You can start naming movies. Oh, I know her. If you didn't know her, she's one of those actresses that you know. Um, and so I'm really excited for her. Again, if you're going to lose, you better lose to someone like Kate Blanchett. I personally love both of them. Uh, uh, I think Yo's my favorite comedy actress performance, and then Blanchett's my favorite like dramatic actress performance. So, you know, I'm good. Um, but I think it's going to be Michelle Yeoh. Um, I am a little nervous about giving everything every all at once three Oscars. It did win three SAG Awards, which is unprecedented, and then it won the ensemble. So so they're vulnerable. I mean, the, I there's a lot of toss up and the major precursors are split all over the place. Um, but you know what? That's actually kind of cool. See how like at the Emmys, I always say, you know, there's, there's so much unpredictability and it does make it more interesting. Some years, like last year, we knew the four mm-hmm. and I was happy for the four. Well, not Will Smith. Cause you know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, I was happy for, for that for him. And then, then he ruined that. Um, but it was like, we knew it was going to happen. It's kind of nice to be like, we were, I don't know. That's actor. Okay. Look, I'm gonna go to disclaimers. I have nothing against Austin Butler as Elvis. He actually did a great job. I and mean, he he really embodied him, even to the point of continuing to embody him after the camera stopped rolling. <laughs> this is one of those though. The whole like he kept the accent thing, and even Angela Bassett was like, "Girl, I played." T-. He's, she's like, "I played Tina Turner." We've all played those biopics, right? And she got an Oscar on for it. It was yeah. a brilliant performance. She's like, "But you got to let it go." Like she kind of was like, "You're talented. You're young." And, and and you got a long career ahead of you. Don't don't make a fool of yourself. Yeah. She didn't say that that way, but that's that's kind of interpreted. Um, he this is one of those where I get you want an Oscar. Every actor wants. We we all want that recognition. You know, th- th- there's no denying that. But he is trying way too hard. Yeah, way too. I mean, it's just it's just blatant. He's from Anaheim. He doesn't sound like a boy from Memphis. I'm sorry. It, I will get over it. It's fine. Um, he wants it. He's trying way too hard. His film, though, is going to win several Oscars. It is nominated for Best Picture. Um, why? I don't know, but that's okay. Um, I really hope Brendan Fraser surprises. When he won the SAG, he started, he's just he's still funny. And in the, the, the whole comeback story, this guy just decided to get out of Hollywood. It's kind of like the K. Wee Kwan thing. Mm-hmm. And he found this really great role. Now, the movie The Whale is a very claustrophobic film. It's a play, and sometimes plays don't translate. 
But he and Hong Chow, who is in Supporting Actress, are so good. I really hope. He won SAG. He won the SAG, and he won the Critics' Choice. Butler has the BAFTA and the Globe. I think Butler has played the right game. He's kissed the right butts. He's like the politician. He's kissed all the right babies. You know, whatever. Yeah. Whatever you have to say. I think he's getting there. But, oh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that's the one that it's like for the other ones i love all three of the people i think could win best supporting actress like yeah. that, there's no bra- bad winner kay hui kwan if barry kogan does upset barry kogan's a- hilarious he's awesome 30 years old he grew up in like a foster home and be able to to be where he is yeah. i mean that's awesome right i this is the one that i hope yeah i hope upsets we'll see all right, the final two categories. Um, for Best Director, a lot of people for a long time thought that this was going to be Steven Spielberg's to lose. And I would actually be okay with that. First of all, I think The Fablemans is going to walk away with zero Oscars, which I really hate because it's right behind Everything Everywhere All at Once. It's one of my favorite films of the year. Um, I think it's really well done. Spielberg could still win this because it is the uh, the personal story. Uh, for those of you who don't know the film, he's basically his kind of version of what happened during his parents' divorce. Mm-hmm. But also it was a time where he kind of, as a teenager, started making films and, and getting into that. And I think, anyway, it's a really great movie. I, I think you should see it. We have it here, by the way. We have a lot of these movies. Um, we have Elvis, The Whale is Coming, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans. Um, and we have a lot of Top Gun Maverick we have. So Women Talking, we just got in. So definitely stop by and, and pick some of these up. Um, but but the Daniels, uh, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert, uh, but they just go by the Daniels, who did everything everywhere all at once. They've won the ba- they, they didn't win the BAFTA. The guy from um, All Quiet on the Western Front won, but he's not nominated here. So um, they won the DGA. They I think they're going to win because um, I, 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 at this point, I, for some reason, this film is just and don't get me wrong, I love it, mm-hmm. but it's unprecedented to have this kind of sweep. And we went have this kind of had, had this kind of sweep in, in a decades at this point. But man, people, it it hit everything. So I, I think they're going to win. Um, I think it'd be dumb at this point to bet against the Daniels, but if anyone's going to beat them, it's going to be Spielberg. And it's kind of like the Kate Blanchett thing. If you're going to lose, you better lose to someone as good as Steven yeah. Spielberg. I also like Todd Field for Tar. Um, uh, he that movie is very well directed, and there's a lot of support for it. But uh, he hadn't won anything, so I think I don't think that's going to happen. Um, best Picture. Let's go to Best Picture. So as you guys know, that the this uh, for many weird. <laughs> I got that one. You can leave in. <laughs> For there's many some years now. <laughs> many years, you got to edit out a few things, but that one you can leave in. For many years now, or for the first couple of years that we had this preferential about after the Argo where Ben Affleck didn't get in, and and but it still won Best Picture, and it kind of broke the curse of like, you have to have Best Director. Um, I kind of missed the boat because I was still trying to fit the old – Oscar system into this new preferential ballot. So kind of like the the square peg and the round hole kind of mm-hmm. thing. I'm finally figuring it out. Of course, then this year I'll miss it. Right. So that's what's <laughs> happened. Um so basically you have this preferential ballot, and the idea is is that you rank your films. The film with the least amount of number one votes gets pulled. And so on that ballot, those ballots for that film, they go to the so let's say Triangle Sadness is probably the number 10. It gets eliminated. And so then they go to who whatever, whatever the second choice is for that. And then they go through the next votes. And basically the idea is, is that you need a lot of number one votes because you need to be popular. But all these films have a lot of number one votes. There's like, what, 300 films submitted? These are the 10 with the most votes for number one. Because um, that's how the nomination process works. It's where the passion comes in. You want to pick your number one vote. That's the one that gets in. Um, but you want films that are well liked. So you want films that have a lot of second and third and fourth place votes because there's a good chance that you're number one there's nine other films, right? Mm-hmm. Gets eliminated. Um, so this new system has favored films that are like screenplay and acting. And I think it's because some of the directorial films are a little visionary. They're a little harder to understand. They're esoteric. And so they go for the films that are a little more warmer, a little more driven by performance and by word. Um, so, But no film has swept, since 2014, has swept the PGA, the DGA, the WGA, and the SAG Ensemble. Um, the new system... So I don't care what system it is. If you win all four of those, you have the biggest groups. Plus, uh, uh, this is, by the way, everything everywhere all at once. It won, I think, at the Art Directors Guild. It won at the Costume Designers Guild. It won the Ace Eddie. Every guild that could give it something, they are finding a way to give it something. They love it. It has the most Oscar nominations. I think that this level of consensus I think it's more than even your Parasite or your Green Book. Like, we didn't see this with Green Book, Parasite, Nomadland, or Coda. There were some things that popped in and out. They split all the big awards. This thing won everything. I think if it were on an old-school five-ballot straight vote system, it would win. I think it's going to win on the preferential ballot. I think a lot of people love this movie. That being said, this ballot is tricky. 
I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is going to be a fun one for y'all to listen to because it's going to show you the uh, the the why we take so much effort on our other podcasts <laughs> to not sound like this. Um, the Fablemans is one of those films that makes you feel good. Uh, uh, Tar doesn't make you feel good, but it's very well done. There's a lot of support. All Quiet on the Western Front, there's a one of the uh, major um, producers, not producers, uh, predictors uh, from a, from one of the major awards magazines. It's predicting All Quiet on the Western Front. He says, I'm hearing a lot about it from older voters. I don't know how that film's going to do on a preference about, and it got literally no nominations in any of those guilds that we talked about. It's kind of hard to do that. I think the BAFTA went for it because it was the big European film. Sometimes the Brits do their own thing. Um, it could win. It's on Netflix. A lot of people have seen it. The Banshees of Inna Sharon. I mean, it, it it's a it's a comedy, but it's a dark comedy. People seem to like it. All these things could happen. Um, I just don't know how it happens. And if it does, it'll be one of the biggest jaw droppers in Oscar history. Um, because even if you go back, even some of the upsets, Crash wasn't an upset. We knew that that voters didn't want to vote for Brokeback Mountain. Not worth going into why. And that was the film they landed on. Why I don't know. You had Munich, you had Capote, you had Good Night and Good Luck. Why that was the worst one you landed on, you did. This is this. There aren't as many jaw droppers as people think. All those years where people were like, oh, Roma's going to win. Roma wasn't going to win. It was going to be Green Book the whole time. I thought maybe at one point Bohemian Rhapsody was going to win and I was going to break the TV because that movie was awful. Um, Nomad Land is the weird one. It is kind of the directorial movie, but it was during the pandemic. The whole world was turned upside down. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just feel like everything everywhere all at once fits into this this system. And it's just, again, unprecedented sweet. And it's the best film of the bunch. It's so good. And I think the reason voters like it, and I'll be honest with you, the fact that I'm predicting this, for months I was like, this movie's not going, the Oscars are not going, it's too wacky. I mean, it's wacky. Yeah. But I think the ending, and we're not going to spoil it, I want you to check it out here, I want you to see it, because it's really, really good. Um, there is so much heart, and it's at the end it's about family and about acceptance and about getting over challenges, about making new friends. And so I think that's why it wins. I think the films that do well on the preferential ballot are the films that make your heart beat. Because mm-hmm. even Nomadland, it's, it's directorial, but there's a lot of emotional moments in that movie. Um, and for all of its wackiness and inappropriate things <laughs> and funny hot dog fingers and all that stuff, the whole point at the end is that this this film really does make you feel. Um, and in the end, feel good and make you laugh and make you go, whoa, and all the stuff along the way. So it's kind of it really is everything mm-hmm. everywhere all at <laughs> once. And that's why they love it. And so I think it's going to win Best Picture. And I will be so happy because it's very rare that my favorite film of the year wins Best Picture. Coda was good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it it made you feel good. It wasn't really that good. But it made you feel really good, right? Mm -hmm. And it was really cool to see deaf actors and deaf stories being told, all that kind of stuff. Um, But it wasn't my favorite film of the year. (laughs) Whatever. It's okay. Um, And so I I am really excited about this. And I think it's going to happen. But. Again, this has been an unpredictable season. So what I would suggest is tune in 8 p.m. Uh, on Sunday. Check out all these wins. We're going to post. I'll post all these uh, these predictions on our blog, which is. Yeah. Gaston Library at blogspot.com. Gaston Library dot blogspot.com yes it's, I'll, I'll call it off the shelf um and and you can tell me where i'm wrong and and maybe i will be uh, uh this year i feel like it's okay if i'm wrong because i feel like a lot of us are going to be wrong yeah. um because because there's so much uh stuff so, so many different uh, directions it could go but definitely check us out and definitely continue to check out guests and speaks we just posted our um new work booked up this mm-hmm. week uh um, kindred yeah by Ken- kindred by octavia butler that was a really good one and we're reading a uh, good omens by Terry, Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman, yes, that's our next one. That's fun. That's yes. a fun one. I'm enjoying it. Um, so I think that's going to be a fun one. So definitely keep keep tuning in and tune into the Oscars and let us know what you think. 